Alright, let's do it. So before I get started, I want to just speak out as a content creator. You're always striving to be perfect. An example is, this is my first vlog and I tried, kept practicing and I hated it and I hated it and I hated it, but I was just like, you know what, I just gotta keep pushing. Just, it's better that it's done than that never being done at all. As my little friend Dory would say, just keep swimming, just keep creating, just keep hustling. All right, let's get to it. In this episode, we're gonna focus on how to write better blog posts. Jesus, if you just look online, how to write a better blog post, you'll be bombarded by like, Articles that say a hundred ways to write a better blog post. A hundred ways, really? What I'm all about is learning the strategies that make the biggest impact. Because in marketing, you can be doing little tweaks and things and everything, but you wanna focus on the big fish, on the bigger projects, on the, on, on the bigger concepts. And if you can write more effective content that builds trust with your audience, that is gonna be so much more powerful for you than doing knowing a little tweak and trick. There's actually a strategy that you already know that you learned in school that you can apply to blog posts. Think back to your old college days. You have a research paper. You haven't done anything. And, well, that was me. And the night before, you're taking a bunch of Red Bull and vodka and Adderall just to finish it and get it done. And then you completed it. Well, writing a research paper is kind of like that without all the stress and trauma. <laughs> So all that stuff you learned in college about how to write a research paper can apply to your blog post. So how? Let's go jump into it. Number one, write your thesis. What is the point of your blog post? What, why are you writing it? Why should someone read it? So in the dictionary, a thesis is defined as a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proved. So this is essentially your content strategy. Why are you writing your blog post? What's the point of it? Just because you have an idea doesn't mean it's a thesis. An idea can help spark a thesis, but an idea itself, like let's say shoes. Shoes, if you're writing a blog post about shoes, great. Uh, but that's not a thesis. What about the shoes? Are these the most powerful shoes in the world? Are shoes better than sandals? Having that intention of why I'm writing this blog post and, and the thesis that you're trying to prove, it comes off and when you're reading it, you're like, oh, okay, this is interesting because there's something of value. And so many of the blog posts out there is just no value, nothing at all. Next step, second, is create an outline. Organize your ideas. All the talking points that you're gonna be including in your outline are gonna be things that support your thesis. If you have something in the body, in the outline, that doesn't support your thesis, then that shouldn't be in your research paper. Creating an outline is also a really easy and just a natural way to start the process of writing a blog post. Outlines are not just important for you to organize your information and make sure you're on the right track when you're writing your blog post, but it also helps making sure everyone else who's in the part of the collaborative process to make sure to say, hey, this is good, I like this, we're good. Oh, actually, we don't like this, can you change that? And then when you're writing the rough draft, at least you're on the right track and it'll be a lot easier. Next one, follow incredible sources. My professor would scold me if I would use someone from Wikipedia or a random blogger from Montana. Nothing wrong with bloggers from Montana, but my professor did scold me because I did cite one. The same way that your professors want you to have quality sources, because let's be real, anyone on the internet can post anything and just say it's facts. And especially now with this whole fake news em epidemic, we have to be very careful because we're all essentially a citizen journalist. So whatever we put up there, um, someone will believe it. And we wanna make sure that we have good values and we have a good integrity. And also we do the right thing. And that's that making sure that what we're writing about, what we're research is credible, that we can trust it, that we can believe it, and it's good information. And this is where it starts to get more difficult because obviously you can distinguish an academic source from one that's not, but what about all the other guys in the middle? So one way to check if your source is credible is to check the domain authority. Now the domain authority basically tells Google of how credible and trustworthy you are. And usually if you have high domain, that means you're more credible. And actually Google loves that. So like, let's say if you're writing a blog post 
and you're linking to a bunch of websites or publications or blog that have a high domain of 40, Google loves that. They're only using quality links. So we like that and that seems more trustworthy. So we're gonna put you at a much higher ranking than someone else who didn't do it. So I recommend there's a bunch of tools where you can check domain of 40. You can see them there and you can also see my YouTube description. And lastly, Jose, what is the last step to writing a really good blog post? Oh, let me think. Uh, make it interesting. I know. Sorry, it's this is not clickbait. Look, guys, there's no shortcuts to success. There's no shortcuts to writing good content. You have to put in the work. And most importantly, you have to be critical of yourself. If you push out a blog post and you read it and you're like, would I read this? Mm, would, is this interesting to me? You know, I and, and I get it. We're I'm a marketer myself, and I was always pushed to write a blog post. And sometimes my bosses didn't even care. So then I was like, oh, why should I care? I'm just gonna push it out, and it's deliverable. It's done. Whatever, my work. But if you really want to make an impact, if you, and most importantly, if you want to have some sort of ROI in your marketing, you gotta make sure you're critical of yourself. Why the hell am I gonna spend time on a blog post that is not interesting? Where I could go to your competitor. If you don't invest time in your content, why would someone want to invest time reading it or watching your content? So put the time and put the effort because if you do that, some reader or visitor will do the same with your content. All right guys, that wraps it up. This is Jose with Jose Angel Studios and I'm out.